Hello, welcome to March 2nd, 2023. My name is Kurt, and this is my daily Good Life Meditation video. This is something that I do every morning shortly after waking up. It's now uh, 4.24 a.m. I do this in order to uh, remember my life objectives and principles, and I want to see how I did applying those to the challenges and opportunities encountered yesterday, and then plan for the coming day. So let's begin. Oh, here comes Ollie. Hold on, let me close the door. He always barges open. Okay. You want to come up here? Come on. In due time. All right, first, last night and yesterday. I slept all right last night. When I got to bed a little late, it felt a little late, like 9 p.m. I slept all right. I did wake up before the alarm, but not thinking about work, just kind of in a twilight, non-slumber. Whoa, careful there, buddy. It was a strange uh, thing. Just, just, you know, maybe it's more, more my body. Otherwise, it was a good day of work yesterday. Another solid day of work. Another day of work where I, by, by 10 a.m. I had already done a full day's of work and then I just powered on and kept on going at it. It was good. Lots of meetings today too, so I'll get to that. Any particular challenges or opportunities? One challenge was my leg, which I injured before we went to Japan by running too much on the beach. Um, that injury seems to be persistent. You would think that a week of or 10 days of being locked in this room and not walking around would have uh, given it time to heal. I did go to the doctor and have a look and they said it's just some damage that needs to heal. So nothing's broken necessarily. You'd think that it would have fixed it, but it didn't. So I'm wearing a brace and walking carefully. Limping is more like it with my wife after work uh, and during our lunch break when we walk the dogs. That was a challenge. Challenge to my, to both the immediate ability to walk and then also a challenge to my sense of uh, uh, soundness, right? Is my, yeah, is my body starting to, you know, crumble? It, it, which it certainly is, right? I mean, there's no question of that. I mean, we can, we can throw all the well wishes and good thinking at it we like, but that's a fact. So, hmm. And I told yesterday, I told you Miko yesterday, I think my running days are done. Not that I was ever a runner in the past, so. But my walking days, now that would be something. <clears throat> are my walking days done? Now that would be a challenge. How would I react to that? What would I do? Well, I already know the answer. Jumped right into my head. I'd turn to, I'd turn to books. I'd just stay here and I'd walk in my mind. So yeah, even if my walking days are done, which I hope they're not, or at least my brisk walking days might be done. Like what if my leg doesn't, simply doesn't heal? There's a man that lives just over here and he described to me once when I first met him, he says, I drag my leg. He's an older man, probably a good 15 years older than me. <coughs> and he does. I see him walk by at least twice a day in front of my window here, dragging his leg along. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a challenge. But I think I'm up to that challenge. Anything else? Not really. Let's do the good life. First, my seven objectives, and then my 34 principles. My first objective, and these are the things that I am striving towards. This is the way that I want to live my life, and the character I want to develop and maintain, and the man that I want to be. Number one, and I guess I could almost rank these in terms of importance. Number one is to always be ready to die. What that means is, 
I want to have my affairs in order, my relationships sound, and my life's work in a state of readiness should I go. And all of those things are. My finances and my paperwork work is also in order. My, I, don't, I don't have anybody that I have to make amends with at this point in my life. Um, and uh, my book, Going Alone, is done, if not finished. My second objective is to make good and effective use of my time. To not let my days fritter away in either wasted activity or useless thought. Frivolous thought, indulgent thought. Like I caught myself in the shower just now thinking um, reckless thoughts, gossip thoughts is what they were, thinking about others. And I caught myself, I said, stop that, Kurt. Don't gossip in your, with your voice or your mind. <clears throat> think better thoughts. So I, instead I turned to script writing and I, and I used the time, my mental time in the shower while I was just in there just now thinking about how I could do a better job with this good life meditation that I knew was coming. And I <clears throat> visualized it in my head doing it more deliberately and carefully and completely than ever before. Because <clears throat> this isn't easy. It's tough. So that's a good use of time, right? That's my second objective. Number three is to develop, the third objective that is, is to develop and maintain good and sound life principles. That's the seven and 34 that I'm talking about right now. Oh, let me back up to one more challenge. We, my wife uh, shipped a bunch of uh, packages yesterday and for the first time we used the printable um, shipping labels and we just dumped them in a local mailbox outgoing mailbox and i felt anxious about that i was like wow are they really going to get there i've always been someone who ships via the post office and <clears throat> watched them take it away and kind of passing through the postman or postwoman's hands and having them throw it in themselves into the little outbound bin feels more gives more assurance and confidence that it'll be there just dumping it into a blue box outside of target didn't feel the same so that's an irrational fear that I had that was a challenge yesterday and I, I met it I, I met it and, and called it out as irrational and uh, let it and moved on and I did, it worked <clears throat> number four the fourth objective is to cultivate good emotional reactions kind of like I did with that postal thing I reacted well I cultivated the emotions I, I reasoned my way through that the fact that I was being silly and worrying that it was the packages weren't going to get there, or that the blue box was just a, a never picked up or something like that. So, good emotional reactions. That's the that's the second, that's the fourth objective. It's a very important one. I do that a lot at work now. Where oh, I might be feeling <clears throat> worried or anxious or something, but I. Uh, I maintain in spite of that. Next is to uh, perform good actions, just to do good things through the day. And then next is to, this is number six, is to recognize my true limits and my true opportunities so that I'm attending to things that I can actually touch and reach and, and uh, not so worried about things that are beyond my, beyond my scope of my my grasp or my influence. Okay, those are my seven objectives. Now for my 34 principles. Principle number one is the principle of war. To always be fighting against what I already believe to be true and fighting against new propositions of truth or things that I encounter that I'm tempted to onboard as true. I want to run them through the gauntlet of reason and really give them good, strong consideration. Like right now, I've got a man that is attempting, he's a Christian man, attempting to woo me over to their side again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just a matter, and I, and I told him, and it's funny, it's really the first time I've ever felt it quite this way, because I get, this happens a lot, I get a lot of, because that's their job, right? That's part of their mandate, is to, is to, uh, 
evangelize and to, to proselytize and to win people over. And I appreciate that. Actually, the Christians that do that, I, I have more respect for than the Christians who, that do not because I feel like they're, they're fulfilling their mandate. If I, knew, if I knew a truth like that, if I knew that hell was a place and uh, that salvation awaited, I would be, I'd hope that I would be on a soapbox after work every day at the, at the corner, you know, shouting it at the top of my lungs. <clears throat> so I appreciate that this man's doing that. So um, in the spirit of war, I am asking him, and I'm quite curious, I don't know, can you give me some good evidence that, you're, that the God you claim is real is actually there. And he told me that he was busy at the moment, but that he would come back, get back to me and let me know. And I'm really looking forward to it now. The, the reason I'm saying all of this is that, that what, this is a proposition of truth that's coming my way. And I'm excited to see what he has to say because maybe this is the one. Maybe he's got some good evidence, not just evidence, but good evidence that uh, will convince me o win me over. Um, and I look forward to seeing it. And that, again, is the spirit of the war. And I have to keep my instruments sharp and, and strong, my skepticism uh, uh, keen. But I also have to be willing to accept truth if, if I see it and to welcome the humiliation of discovering that I'm wrong. We'll see what happens when this person... Uh, uh, Let's me know what their what their reason is. In the first in the spirit of First Peter fifteen, I think it is. Anyway, the principle number three is the homunculus. I don't believe I have a soul or that any of us do, but I clearly seem to have a consciousness. And I label that consciousness my homunculus. And I picture it as a little man trapped inside me <coughs> who can't get out. The next principle then is the um, anchor hold, which is connected to the homunculus. They go together. If the homunculus is the little man inside me who's trapped, the anchor hold is my visualization of that little man so trapped. I see him standing or sitting or laying upon a, a, a crumbly rock, or maybe it's not a crumbly rock, it's a very solid rock, but a jagged rock sticking out of the sea, hard and cold, covered in seaweed at the lower extremity, splashed with the water. and and uh, stricken with the wind. And that's how I am. I am stuck upon a rock like that. My consciousness is trapped upon this, this uh, sea stack of a body that sticks out of the sea, a deep and cold sea that if we fall into, that's the end of us. And everybody else is on their own little rock, sticking out elsewhere. We're each of us ultimately quite alone in that capacity in terms of being stranded in our bodies. <clears throat> that's what the anchor hold is. And I remember this so that I can recall that once I die, that I'll, my body will slip over the edge into the sea. And that'll be the end of that. No coming back. Death is forever. Unless that guy can convince me otherwise. <laughs> and that'd be cool, because I would love to believe that I could continue going on. I'm enjoying life. Kind of a, a shame that it all has to seemingly end so permanently and forever. Okay, the next principle is the home of good and evil. I believe right and wrong, good and evil are subjective ideas that we hold in our minds that don't necessarily pervade the universe. There's no uh, right or wrong beneath the clouds of Venus. There are ideas that we have as human beings that we maintain. And I believe that other animals, more sentient animals, have the capacity to do the same thing. And that right and wrong are their own beliefs huh. relative to their world and experience and uh, cognitive capabilities. Next is the principle of purpose. I have three sub-purposes in my life, purpi if you like. Number one is to be a good husband and father. Number two is to be a virtuous man where I pursue virtue where virtue is defined as the seeking after the improvement of the well-being of thinking creatures, very specific. And my third principle is the sharing of my book, Going Alone, available uh, on Amazon, at bookstores, and um, on my website. I really need to do something about that domain. Huh, maybe I could link to it off of my, yeah, that's what I'll do, I'll link to it off of Going Alone.
the going on website. It's not linked there now, but I will. Okay, next. Um, <clears throat> the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces, all falling to pieces. And then the principle of nature. Everything and everyone has a particular nature, and it's good to recognize what that is so we can live in a better accord with it. Even inanimate things have a nature, like a Thursday. Thursday has a nature, of, which is what today is, of being uh, <clears throat> hearkening to the weekend, yet uh, still trapped, well, well, well uh, embedded in the current week. Then comes the principle called the pirate ride, a suggestion that free will is an illusion. It's a belief that I hold, but I can't prove, but I strongly suspect that it's true, that we are compatible with the universe. We are nudged and jostled, just like leaves blowing in the wind or a river coursing down a canyon. Neither are truly in control of their destiny, so to speak, but uh, that's, a, that's the wrong word. Their future, their, their, li their course, they don't have a life, their, their course, but they are uh, simply uh, in accordance with what's happening around them, all the forces of nature, the wind and the tides and the rain and the, and the, and the geology around them that course things to the one way or the other. It's, it's all just one big <clears throat> churning uh, snow globe of sorts. Can't prove this again, but I believe it's true. Next comes the principle of maturity. We are mature when we uh, achieve three things. One, we have the, the wisdom of our life's experience. Two, we develop the fortitude to do better in the future and to avoid the mistakes we've made in the past. And three, um, We can hold on. Have, oh, we can then enjoy the integrity of a life lived in accordance with our where our, our actions are in alignment with our our experience, and we have the uh, will, the internal will to do better. Next comes the social principle. We're so we are social creatures. We need each other, and our best lives are the lives that we live uh, in conjunction with our our people and our communities. And then the principle of family. It's good to develop a family in our lives. It could be the nuclear family of sorts or the extended family, or it could be any type of family you want to create that's an affiliation and connection of human beings and pets. It's good to have. And then public speaking is the next principle. A reminder to be very careful in our communication, both our listening, our speaking, and our writing, to develop a uh, a good, solid vocabulary that we can use carefully to be able to learn to filter our communication through our values. That's prudence. And then also to be able to season our communication with our emotions. That's felicity. To become eloquent through modeling and practice. And then to always avoid rumors and gossip, spreading rumors and engaging in gossip. <clears throat> Next comes uh, temperance, our ability to control our consumption of all things in life, including our, our life itself. Temperance is self-control in all aspects. Then comes uh, life will not go well. Life's going to have trouble. Speed bumps along the way. Be ready for it. Expect it every day. The next principle is called the horror show. It's a reminder that uh, sometimes life just doesn't go well. Sometimes it goes horribly unwell. True horror, cancer, car accidents, sudden death, whatever the case may be, a house burns down, uh, very painful disease, etc., etc. Bankruptcy, uh, poverty, homelessness, these are all horror uh, show elements, level elements. And the horror is happening all around us, to all people around us, and it's coming for us, if not here already. That which must be born is next. Born with an E, carried. And we have to carry the fact that life will not go well and the incidents of the horror show that are coming for us. 
Next comes the Feast of Ophel, which is a reminder to not engage in the expression of my upset onto others, to dump it onto others, but to be very careful to hold it in and to find other ways to deal with it. I don't want to contaminate people with my, my, uh, my immaturity and my upset. Likewise, when others are doing that, I don't want to sit there with like a voyeur with popcorn eating it up. It contaminates me when I do that, but I should keep my safe distance, attend to people as I need, offer them a, a tissue to, to cry into and a shoulder to lean on, but I do not consume their upset because that just contaminates us and then we become useless to, to the world as well. Next comes distraction and then agency and the great indifference two principles that go together. Agents are us, you know, like creatures that have the ability to think and to be a part of, to live its life itself, basically. Even a plant is an agent. And the curious thing is when, that when we're surrounded by agents or their artifacts, the things, the evidence of their, of their existence, it's hard for us to see the emptiness that pervades most of the universe. The vast majority of the universe seems to be quite empty of agency. There is phenomena and matter and energy, but uh, little agency, little evidence or no evidence of agency outside of, outside of the earth. But there are places where we can get, kind of get a glimpse at that, like in the deep desert, the Bristol Mountains in California, north of Siberia. Go out there far enough and the agency becomes apparent, the lack of agency that is, becomes apparent. And I call that emptiness the great indifference. And it is the universe without God. And that's a huge thing to spot because it's evidence of a sort that God doesn't exist. And, or if he does, or it, she, she or it does exist, it's, it's either mischievous, hiding, or even malevolent, in which case uh, it can be disregarded. That leaves us on our own. And that makes us responsible for everything. At least insofar as uh, for the existence of free will is considered to exist. Although it, that would be an interesting thing if I could really get myself to the point of actively believing that free will wasn't, wasn't a thing, would I, what would I do? Would I just sit on a lump all day? Sit on a stump? I don't think so. Hmm. I'd still be compatible with the universe around me. Hmm. That's a good thought right there. That's a realization, right? It's like a robot that realizes it's a robot that, but goes on working the assembly line because that's what it was built to do. That's Or in that case, a robot was built. In our case, that's what evolution brought us to. So yeah, it's not such a bad thing if I, if I can recognize that free will is an illusion. But I'm way back. I, I, backwards. I went backwards, didn't I? Let's come back to the point at hand. Distraction and agency and the great indifference. So I try not to distract myself with work and play and home and sports and hobbies and politics and etc. Instead, I, well, I mean, I still do those things, but, uh, but I also try to attend to the emptiness of the universe. Next comes uh, the best seat in the house, to be all right with who I am and where I am and what I'm doing, all the while striving to improve. And then next comes a series of four principles that go together. This is, this is the uh, restless man, the path of wildness, the great life adventure, and the risk of avoiding risk. Restless man speaks to the feelings that we sometimes have, particularly when we're young, that we want to have an adventure in life. The path of wildness is the off-ramp that we take into that venue, that new, that new world, that new life. And then the great life adventure is the resulting story as, that we get as, as a consequence of stepping upon the path of wildness. The risk of avoiding risk speaks to the spectrum of risk. Where on the one hand, there's too much safety where we don't attend or heed that desire to have an adventure. And then on the other end, there's too much adventure where we haven't attended to the necessities of providing for our, our welfare and our, and our families and our old age. So it's watch out, winding up on one or the other end of the spectrum. Try to find a middle ground in between. I recommend after college taking five or six years up until age 30 and just having a great time with an adventure in life. And then from there on you can build the, uh, the infrastructure of family and career and etc. Having had your story. 
Okay, next comes sin and damnation. In my worldview, I don't have a God to sin against, but I do have the good principles of good living that we can we can break, which is a sin. And mostly for me, these consist of sins against uh, communication, against by being a liar, perhaps, or being uh, uh, gullible, or spreading rumors, or engaging in gossip. There are eight particular sins. They are falsity, being untrue, credulity, believing things too readily, faith, belief founded on belief, which is nonsense, superstition, more nonsense, dogma, belief based on tradition, authority, beliefs, beliefs uh, based on the charisma or the appearance or the uh, aura or just the whole feeling of someone, and then um, uh, rumors and gossip. Don't, I don't engage in doing either of those things. The, the, the punishment for engaging in these sins is damnation in the here and now. Next comes complete oblivion. Without a soul and without a God, there's no heaven or hell and no afterlife. That means that when I'm dead, I won't have a chance to see anybody again or even to know anything about myself. I'll be gone forever, absolutely. That means there'll be no final reunion with the ones I love, no final reconciliation, and no final justice. Death is seemingly an absolute state. <clears throat> Next comes uh, script writing. The ability to write the story of our life in our minds as we're going along. Like I did earlier in the shower, writing the script that I was going to do a good job with this good life meditation. And I think I am. I'm covering there each, each point in detail. Good. It really does work. Script writing really can help to uh, prepare for the day. And it's a good way to, to drag the mind away from gossip or internal, internal gossip, that is. Next comes the bullseye aim. A reminder that whatever we strive for in life, we should expect to, even though we aim for this target, we should expect to miss by some greater or lesser degree. Instead of being upset when we miss, we should expect it. Next comes the uphill climb, steady upward climb in life, getting higher every day. A greater, I, I picture it like climbing a mountain that never seems to end. We die upon the side of the mountain, never reaching any summit. Although we could dig ourselves a hobbit hole into the side of the hill somewhere, stay for 30 years. Doesn't interest me. I'd rather keep climbing. I, I guess you could stay in one place and climb, but uh, it's, it's a climbing of a sort, right? I prefer the wholesale exercise of carrying, carrying all my goods with me and, and th make those goods very few and, scar and spares and light. The uphill climb, the striving to finishing the day with a better view and more comprehensive view of life than the day before. <clears throat> arena and utility. Life is this arena for the development of objectives and principles that we can then keep sharp and ready and honed so that we can use them throughout our days. That is the reminder of arena and utility, to keep these principles ready and to use them actively. Nothing is enough. This is the principle number 33, the second to last. A simple reminder to, uh, towards simplicity in life. And then finally, the principle of fun. A suggestion that we should spend a good, good portion of the day having fun. Even at work, we can have fun. We can, we can, I, like, I, like elo I like talking. I like eloquence. I like listening to people. I like good conversation. That's fun to me. That's why I engage in that at my workplace. I also remember the good times of the past and plan for good times to come. I told that to Miko yesterday. We need to have more things to plan and look forward to. We had a great time in Japan. Best trip ever. She commented that perhaps it was so good because it had been so long in coming and she's probably right. All right. Now, let's, uh, that's the creed. Let's move on to the day ahead. Um, it's going to be a lot of meetings today. So it'll be a day of meetings, and I'm ready for it. First I'll do is I'll finish this, then I'll go over and I'll read the Bible. I'm going to read, uh, I think it's Amos 3. And then I'll um, uh, feed the dogs, uh, let the dogs out. Well, I let them out already once. I'll feed the dogs. I'll, I'll feed myself. 
I'll come inside and I'll get the computer all set up and I'll read a little bit before I start the day and then I'll just jump in and I'll do my job. I'll go to my meetings, I'll do my tasks, I'll attend to the email, answer the team's meetings all the way to the end of the day. And then in the evening I'll play my guitar and sit in Discord with talk to anybody that wants to talk to me in Discord and then have dinner with my wife, watch a show on TV together with her uh, and then uh, call it a day and go to bed. It'll be a good day in that capacity. And with that, I'll stop. Thank you for joining me. I wish you all the best. Be safe, but not too safe. And remember, with that, well, not that you care. So no remember. And with that, my life is done, if not finished. Take care.